Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where we are going to be talking about the Unique magazine today. The Unique magazine can only be Weird Tales. Weird Tales. One of the most important pulp magazines ever printed. Certainly one of the most celebrated, justifiably so, I believe, because some of the most important stories to appear in the pulps appeared in Weird Tales, and some great writers got their start in the Unique magazine, which was first published uh, in March 1923, and it ran until September 1954. That was the original run of Weird Tales. It has resurfaced, Weird Tales has, here and there over the years, but we are not going to concern ourselves with those versions of Weird Tales, we're going to talk about the original Weird Tales, which was uh, a really interesting magazine. It truly was unique. It published horror fiction and fantasy fiction and other types of fiction. It published a lot of fiction that would not be able to find markets in other places because of the type of fiction that it was. The first editor of Weird Tales was Edwin Baird, and it was under his editorship that H.P. Uh, Lovecraft published his first story in Weird Tales. I believe that was Dagon, which is a heck of a story. It's, it's a wee, it's a tiny little story, but really, really good. And also it was under Edwin Baird that Clark Ashton Smith wrote his first, or published his first weird stories in Weird Tales. But it was probably under the editorship of Baird's assistant, who took over as editor, Farnsworth Wright, that Weird Tales reached its greatest heights. Wright was an interesting guy. He made some odd choices as an editor from time to time. He was kind of inconsistent as far as what he thought was a good story and what wasn't, or what was right for the magazine and what wasn't. He did overall have a wider view of what a weird tale was than Baird did. And so you'll get all kinds of different types of stories in weird tales during uh, his time as editor. You had horror stories, of course. You had fantasy stories. You also had sword and sorcery stories. Sword and sorcery kind of made its debut in weird tales because the father of sword and sorcery, Robert E. Howard, wrote The Shadow Kingdom, the first call story, which was, well, the first published call story, which was the first sword and sorcery story, according to a lot of people. And it could have been the first sword and sorcery story. I think there are other stories that could make a case, but certainly Robert E. Howard deserves the title of the father of sword and sorcery. So you had that, in Weird Tales. You had science fiction actually appeared in Weird Tales here and there. And a lot of great writers wrote some amazing stories in Weird Tales during that time. Not all the fiction that appeared in Weird Tales was amazing. Some of it was pretty bad. But you're gonna get that in any pulp magazine of the time, really. So Farnsworth Wright, uh, it was during his time that the best stories showed up in Weird Tales. Unfortunately, uh, Wright had Parkinson's. He had Parkinson's. It, it first made its appearance in 1921, but his condition gradually declined. Uh, by the end of the 1920s, he couldn't sign his name. And during the 1930s, physically he faced a lot of challenges, and eventually he did have to leave the magazine, uh, unfortunately. He, it was a tough road for him. He didn't pass away until 1940, but Parkinson's can be tough. But he didn't let that stop him from being a great editor, despite his odd choices at times. He did... Uh, published some great stories, but he also 
rejected a lot of great stories. The Call of Cthulhu, for example, from Lovecraft, was initially rejected. Which makes no sense, because that story is fantastic and was perfect for weird tales. He did prefer shorter stories, and so H.P. Lovecraft stories kept getting longer and longer and longer. So that could have been part of why some of Lovecraft's stories were rejected. Hard to say. But certainly most of H.P. Lovecraft's great stories were published in Weird Tales. So Weird Tales had the big three. It, it had what we consider the big three authors of Weird Tales. And the first one is, of course, H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft and his Cthulhu mythos have become legendary. He is the most influential horror writer of the 20th century. Tremendously important to H.P. Lovecraft. His stories have become very popular uh, during the 21st century, which is interesting. His place in American literature is assured. He's made his way into the Library of America, as well as some popular editions like this one from Barnes & Noble. H.P. Lovecraft, what an imagination he had. He just wrote some tremendous horror stories. Later on in his career, he moved on to science fiction. And some of his later stories were actually published outside of Weird Tales. His science fiction stories like The Color Out of Space and The Shadow Out of Time. Tremendous stories that were published elsewhere. But still, Weird Tales published most of his important work. He sadly passed away in 1937. Another of the big three who is either almost as important as Lovecraft or just as important, depending on her point of view, was the great Robert E. Howard. My personal favorite, Robert E. Howard, my favorite writer of all time, most famously, he is known as the creator of Conan the Barbarian, although he wrote a lot more than that. And some of his greatest horror and fantasy stories were published in Weird Tales. Conan was published in Weird Tales. What a writer Robert E. Howard was. I mean, he could write like nobody else. He was actually pen pals with the other two, other two big, big three members of Weird Tales, H.P. Uh, Lovecraft and Clark Ashton Smith. Robert E. Howard, probably, he's, he's very well known just for Conan, but I think he probably should be better known than he is. I think he's a better writer than a lot of people give him credit for. Probably because most people know Conan through places outside of the original stories. Most people know Conan from either the films or the comic books. It's the original stories uh, that are amazing. And I think, he, like I said, I think he's a better writer than he's given credit for, but he made his home mostly in Weird Tales. He did have other markets, a lot of them actually. He wrote boxing stories, he wrote Westerns, he wrote all kinds of stuff. But Weird Tales was the home for most of his horror and fantasy fiction. So he was the second member of the big three. And the third should really be better known, and that is, of course, Clark Ashton Smith. A tremendous writer, Clark Ashton Smith. Really weird fantasy and science fiction writer. Mostly fantasy, also horror. He wrote some amazing stories. He was more at home, I think, writing poetry. He was more of a poet. But he had a period where he just turned out the stories. And he did so for Weird Tales for a while. Uh, it was in 1937 that he pretty much gave up writing stories. 
although his stories continue to appear in weird tales, I think up through 39, I think. But definitely Clark Ashton Smith, one of the big three of weird tales. And like I said, another writer that should be better known. He does have a Penguin Classics edition, but he, he deserves more than that. I personally think Clark Ashton Smith was good enough to be in the Library of America. I think he probably was important enough to be. He was different than H.P. Lovecraft and Robert E. Howard. He had his own style. It's just brilliant work. And when he left the magazine, Weird Tales was in a bit of a fix because going into the 1940s, you know, it had lost Robert E. Howard, H.P. Lovecraft, and Clark Ashton Smith. They were all gone. One writer who was still there, thankfully for Weird Tales, was actually the most popular writer of Weird Tales at the time. And that is the severely underrated Seabury Quinn, uh, the creator of Jules de Grandin. The, uh, Jules de Grandin was uh, a supernatural investigator. And Jules de Grandin's stories actually went from 1928 to 1951. So Weird Tales was publishing Jules de Grandin for a while and publishing Seabury Quinn stories for a long time. Seabury Quinn wrote stories other than just Jules de Grandin, though that is what he is best known for. For a long time, he's been considered a lesser writer than the big three, and he probably was, to be frank. But his stories were tremendously fun. Uh, these are fun stories. I think they're probably a lot better than they are given credit to be. And he was very important for Weird Tales magazine because he was so consistent and popular. Readers really loved this guy at the time and they loved these stories. These stories are available now. Uh, this hardcover edition, who publishes this hardcover edition? This is Nightshade Books. They did a five volume set of the Jules de Grandin stories. I highly recommend them. They're, they're really fun, they're really entertaining. And for Weird Tales, at least, they were pretty important because this guy kept working. But they, they did need somebody to come along and kind of replace H.P. Lovecraft and Robert E. Howard. And there really wasn't anyone that could fit the bill, but one writer came close, and that was Manly Wade Wellman. Another writer who should be better known than he is, Manly Wade Wellman who wrote occult detective stories uh, featuring John Thunstone. John Thunstone, who was a personal friend of Jules de Grandin. Manly Wade Wellman wrote a lot of stories. And I don't know that they could ever compete with Lovecraft or Robert E. Howard. They, they can't really. But they are uniquely his own. And they're really interesting. They're more on the fantasy side than the horror side of things. He wrote about different occult investigators. Thunstone was probably one of his earlier ones, uh, but he eventually wrote stories for fantasy and science fiction magazine featuring Silver John, uh, one of his most popular characters. And Manly Wade Wellman wrote stories for a long, long time. But he sort of became an important writer on Weird Tales during the 1940s, after the golden era of Weird Tales, which ended when Clark Ashton Smith stopped submitting to the magazine. Unfortunately, despite some great talent, Weird Tales didn't outlast the 50s, and it kind of, as far as quality is concerned, never really reached the heights that it did in the 1920s and the 1930s. It died without fanfare, like I said, in the early 50s. But there were a lot of really important writers who wrote for it. 
not just the ones I've mentioned, but also Edmund Hamilton was an important writer in Weird Tales. C.L. Moore was an important writer in Weird Tales. Henry Kootner. Uh, there are a bunch of writers, including Ray Bradbury, made an appearance in Weird Tales. There were a lot of really important writers that wrote for the magazine. There are a lot of writers that have since been forgotten, but enough great fiction was published in that magazine that it will always be remembered. Also, the artwork was really interesting. One of the artists that is most associated with Weird Tales magazine is the cover artist Margaret Brundage. She did some really interesting covers featuring naked ladies and women in dangerous situations. Certainly when she painted a cover, the magazine would sell, from what I understand. Really interesting artist, Margaret Brundage. And a lot of times when we see the covers to Weird Tales, it's her covers that we're seeing. And a lot of times when we think of the magazine, it's her covers that show up in our mind's eye. She wrote some truly original covers for Weird Tales. But an, I think the, the greatest artist that ever showed up in Weird Tales was probably, in my opinion, the greatest pulp artist of all time, and that was Virgil Finlay. And he had a long career. He had a 35-year career uh, doing artwork for pulp magazines and science fiction magazines. His artwork was amazing. Uh, it was tremendously detailed. He had some early illustrations in Weird Tales. He did some covers for Weird Tales. He is an artist that was just so good that he probably should be more remembered than he is. And I'm kind of surprised that he isn't. I, I kind of feel like there should be a whole set of currently published books featuring this guy's art because his illustrations were amazing. I mean, they were just incredible. There were a lot of really interesting artists that appeared in Weird Tales, but I think he was probably the standout. And he was in a lot, he was published in a lot of different magazines. Uh, later in Weird Tales, Hannes Bach showed up. And his illustrations are also really interesting. And probably should, he was, he's another artist that probably should be remembered uh, a, a bit more than he is. But we had some great art as well in Weird Tales magazine. It was really an incredible magazine. And that was just a short little introduction to it. And I guess that's all I have to say about Weird Tales magazine. Of course, I always talk about the writers who appeared in it. So you will hear me mention Weird Tales magazine many, many, many more times in the future. Okay, guys, you have a great day.